Welcome everyone to the American Civil War Museum's Home Front Education Series, where we bring the stories of the Civil War and our collection right to you at home. Now, we are here in our Richmond location at Greenback America, one of the temporary exhibits at our main museum. And I am also joined here by Dr. Chris Graham, who is the curator for the exhibit. So, welcome, Chris. Thank you, Joseph. Right. Oh, now, we have gone through several sections of the exhibit already, uh, and now we really want to get to the driving force, the part that brings it all home for us. So, what are we looking at right now? Okay, so when the uh, Legal Tender Act and the National Bank Act are issued during the war, mm -hmm. um, and, and the federal government gets into the money game by issuing greenbacks, uh, these bank notes, these legal tender notes, mean many things to many people. And uh, for some, they're symbols of the Lincoln administration's radical overreach. Mm. For others, they're symbols of patriotism and the cause of the war and worth supporting no matter what. Right. Uh, for many people, of course, uh, greenbacks are uh, symbols of the first time that they're able to legally spend money. So, right, because we're talking about newly freed people, formerly enslaved folks who are just now getting access to funds and being able to be paid for the labor that they are doing. Exactly. And, uh, and greenbacks and the United States money is, becomes, for many people, a symbol of that freedom and a symbol of faith in the government. Wow. Yeah. Um, beyond that, though, get, getting after the Civil War, uh, the, the presence of the federal government in the monetary system uh, takes on an uh, even greater meaning mm -hmm. um, in terms of now the federal government has more direct stake in economic equity in the United States. Right. And they can control economic equity by how much money is issued, how much money is not issued. And again, they're still in competition with banks who are also issuing national bank notes and a conservative uh, uh, monetary system that wants to return to gold standard as well. Right. So as they've actually started with the big issue of how do we even recognize different kinds of money, who's controlling that money, and then the government decides that we need to continue this war and we need to fund it, now after the war, they're still trying to figure out what is going to be our continuing role in this. And there's a lot of different people who have different stakes in it. That's correct, but once, that, once it's established that Congress has the power to issue money in the economy, um, Congress and congressional elections and national elections uh, take on monetary issues. Uh, Greenbacks, the Greenback Labor Party, mm -hmm. excuse me, the Greenback Party, the Greenback Labor Party. Eventually, the, pop, the People's Party, also known as the Populists, mm -hmm. all campaign on issues of how much money is issued into the economy and how much money is necessary to make economic equity in the United States. Wow. I mean, that's kind of incredible to think about, especially as a legacy of the Civil War, too. That's correct. Um, many of these uh, acts of Congress during the war, the Moral Tariff, the Land Grant Act, the Legal Tender Act, the National Bank Act, um, the results of it, the legacy of it, isn't just to preserve the Union, but it transforms the nation. Um, and it transforms uh, various power centers in the nation. So with all of that, and we pretty much know how the story ends, is that it continues on, and now, uh, even today, we're looking at different ways of, of how we connect with uh, money and with the federal government. What's the big takeaway? Well, the big takeaway is that even though uh, Congress in 1913 gave the power to issue money, uh, took it away from themselves and gave it to the, f the new Federal Reserve, mm -hmm. and so monetary issues are not necessarily a major campaign issue for Americans. Um, matters of economic equity remain so, and the fact that the federal government has a part in that um, still remains. Um, and, what, and the lesson from Greenback America is that you have a relationship with the government. You have a relationship with banks. You have a say in what the government and the banks do to help ensure economic equity in the country, and it's a, you need to step up and do it. Right. And how best do we step up and do that? Is it uh, civic engagement, what would your recommendation be? Uh, civic engagement, uh, financial literacy, right. uh, pay attention to the rules and regulations that are, may seem boring, yeah. but things that Congress passes, things that banks do. Right. And so I guess, especially when it comes to Congress, 
one of the things that we have to do is keep in mind that we got to vote in order to make sure that the people who are actually making these choices are uh, elected and they have our best interests in, in mind. Exactly. That's the best thing you can do. Wow. Great. Well, thank you so much, Chris. This has been incredible, uh, being able to go through Greenback America with you, especially as the curator of the exhibit itself. Uh, so as we move on, we're going to see what happens next in our, uh, our next Homefront Education series, and we'll be able to really dig into a lot of different things, too. Hey, Joseph. Uh, how is the Greenback? No, no, no. We're going to keep on going, and we'll see you all next time at uh, uh, Homefront Education at the American Civil War Museum.